All right, now we're saying that uh, sound devices deals with what we hear. Uh, we have rhyme, we have illustration, as we say, we have assonance, consonance, ideophone, and onomatopoeic words. Onomatopoeia. Now, rhyme. Like when I say Esther, then I say pasta. What do you hear at the end? There is the same sound. That is referred to as rhyme. Okay? Now, when we say alliteration, for example, when we say God made man, man made money, money made man mad. So there is a sound we hear at the beginning, and this is a consonant sound that refers to as alliteration. Then, assonance, right? Uh, she pricked the tip of my finger. She pricked the tip of my finger. You will see pricked, e, tip, e, fi, e, finger. That is assonance. Now, consonants. It was very hard for the heart to be there. So we have that sound, hard and hard, at the end. That is consonants. Then, ideophone. For example, I can do this. So, when I... That is the sound. So what do you call that? Clap. So when I say clap, clap. Now the sound made is the ideophone. And the word clap, which has some relationship with the ideophone, the sound, is what is referred to as an onomatopoeic word. So let's look at them each uh, and see how they are. All right, we have a simple poem here. Uh, breathe. Listen more to beings than to words that are said. The water's voice sings and the flame uh, cries. And the wind that brings the words to sigh. And is the breathing of the dead. Now, we have these words. Things, sings, brings, they write. So, in the above poem, we have this word, things, uh, sings, uh, and brings. They have the same sound at the end. Then, cries and sighs. Cries and sighs. So, rhyme is when we have uh, the same sound, in, line, in, in, in uh, lines of a poem at the end. So when we say things and things, remember rhyme is not on alternative sentences. I mean in the same sentence. Let's say for example, listen uh, as she sings to things. Those are, that is not rhyme. It must be at the end of every single line in a poem. So we say things rhymes with things also rhymes with brains. And then cries rhymes with sighs. All right, then we have uh, alliteration. And what does alliteration refer to? So this is the repetition of initial, initial consonant sound. Not vowel sound, but consonant sound. And where does it take place? At the beginning of words. And how should these words be? They should be at close proximity. So what does this mean? It should be noted that it is the sounds that are threats and not the letters. So remember we say, what do you hear? Not, what do you see? What do you hear? But not what you see. Now look at this example. Since now such splendid sights seem Right? Since now such we say is the repetition of consonant sound at the initial of the letter. So since such splendid sight see. So we have sound which is alliterated. If we look at the other sentence, Kamau keeps cups in the cupboard. 
Kamau keeps cups in the cupboard. Now, cup, cup, cup. So it is not uh, it is not the letters, but it is the sound that we have there. Now, uh, I want us to look at this also. Uh, look at what we have. When weeds in weeds shoot long and lovely. So you'll find when weeds, weeds shoot, okay? When weeds, weeds, long, lovely consonant sound. Then, stare for the sake of the souls. Stare for the sake of the souls. Now, stare, sake, souls, right? Staying, sailing. And then, private policy is a public profit. Private policy is a public profit. Then, dignity still shall be dressed with decorum. Dignity, dressed, decorum. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll say we are going to interact in our Google class, uh, Classroom. I'll explain more. And then we shall pick in our next lesson uh, from alliteration and then pick on the next sound device, which is uh, uh, assonance. Thank you very much. Stay safe and have a lovely day.